Hello and welcome back. This is a basics video for the Singer 700 series machines and today I'm going to be using a 766 for this demonstration. So the first thing to do is to unlatch the cover, just two latches on the side there. The foot controller is normally found in the on the inside, on the end of the machine in this little cubby here and the manual you'll normally find tucked away on the inside here on the side as well. The accessories here we won't go too far into the accessories today this is a just a basics video so I will be doing other videos on specialized uses for some of these accessories. We fold down the side bed there so if we consult the manual here you'll see that they'll start by identifying the parts and the principal parts there and the accessories we won't uh, dwell too long on that so hooking up the power cable there just plugging into the power there on the side there's only one way that can go and you've got a power switch here with a minimum and maximum speed here so Maximum is when you put your foot flat is the fastest it's going to go and Minimum there is a lower speed. So if you put your foot flat, obviously, it's just not going to go as fast fairly self-explanatory and The switching from the off position turns the lamp on as well And you'd notice if you were going through the manual there that uh, you know it talks about selecting your needle the correct needle for the job and uh, and the correct thread as well so the next thing to do is do some threading. So when it comes to the uh, basic threading of the top thread, you can see in the manual here that it actually says to put this spool holder uh, to the right hand side always. And there should actually be a little bit of sponge on there. The sponge is missing off this one. And so that that goes on first, like so. There's a note to say that the end of the spool, so I'm, I'm going to go a little bit sort of old school here with this spool here. It also mentions there that if there's a slit for retaining the thread, which is there, so that's you know for tying off your thread and storing your spool so that the thread doesn't unravel that should go always against the this here and against the foam pad which is missing there and that way you you won't have the problem where when the thread comes off that it's potentially going to catch in the in this in this slit here and pull like that the way that you put this on is determined by the diameter of the end of the spool here so this diameter of whatever side you use should be bigger than that diameter there on the end of the spool so this ends actually a little bit smaller than the diameter of that spool there so we should use it like that there but this smaller spool holder here that's probably more suited to these types of cops here that have just got a a cylindrical plastic uh, like a pipe running through and that way you know you can just put it on like that that should be fine I mean the key to this is really uh, making sure that the the thread never traps at any stage here so slip to the right there put that on and then we're coming across to this thread post here and that thread you can literally just pull down like that and there we have it nicely pulling off there and there's also this handy threading diagram in the behind the faceplate here for a quick reference and then we come to the tensioner here the first thing to do is come under this little bar here and over the top of the thread tensioner and 
best to probably just hold back back here and give this end a pull like that. Also make sure when you're threading this section here that you pull the thread down so that it clips under a little guide under here. So I'm just going to hold back here and I'm going to pull this tight and you can actually hear it flick the little tick where it flicks under the little guide and now that's in the correct position there now. So the thread comes over the top of this around here under a little guide down quite low at about 7 o'clock position and then up and over this little check spring here. If you've got the uh, presser foot here up with the lever, uh, that actually releases the tension there and that's by design so that when you've finished your seam you can pull the uh, fabric out with the thread nice and easily, it just releases the tension here. So if you pull that you'll notice there's not a lot of tension there, but if you put the presser foot down you'll notice it'll tighten up. Well it should do, uh, if it's not, well maybe you know your tension's not set right here, but I would start probably on about five maybe, or four, somewhere around there for this machine. And I can feel that that's you know, a, a lot tighter there, and if I lift the press foot it's a lot looser. So that's pulling nicely through there. You might also be wondering why we haven't covered bobbin winding first, and that's normally the starting point really is to wind a bobbin. Well these machines work in a different way where you thread the needle and the bobbin's wound in place and I've got a video on that. I will um, link that in if I can up in the uh, up here and I have a video on that showing the in place bobbin winding on the 700 series singer. So now we just come underneath this bar here and it's just a, a loop, a one-way loop there. So you might be able to see there's a slot in the take-up lever there. So that should always be at the top of its position there. Just like that. And then we can thread the thread, just go over the top of it, and it will pop into the slot as it falls backwards and then come forward and it should be in the eye of the take-up lever there and we position the take-up lever at the top of its travel and the next thing to do there is after coming through the take-up lever is to pull the thread around the right hand side of that loop there and just straight through like that and that's just a sort of from back to front type thread there and then just through the little loop above the needle, uh, left to right, you can come across and hook under the little loop there, like that. Let's give you a closer look at that there. So just from, so this thread pull in from the right across to the left here. It should flick into this little guide here. And then this guide here is just left to right and around the back of this little finger here, like so. And we'll just thread front to back, just like so. And then wind the thread around this post here. And there's a reason for that, that's to do with the in place bobbin winding. Also make sure your stitch selector is on straight stitch that your needle position is in the central position here and that your width dial is set to zero and also that your buttonhole is set to the N setting. You can also wind a bobbin with either of these feet installed, so the straight sewing foot or the general purpose uh, pattern stitching type foot, the see-through for decorative stitching. Then we're ready to start winding a bobbin and the bobbins for these machines are quite nifty, they're an in-place wind bobbin and if you've already got thread on there and you want to get rid of the thread you can literally just unscrew the two halves like that and then just pull the thread that you want to discard off and then just screw the two halves back together 
and you're ready to put fresh thread on there. Now we're ready to place the bobbin into the machine. Just pull back the slide plate here and you'll notice there is a metal clip. Lift that up, place the bobbin in, put the clip down like that and then you want to push this lever here to the left with the little arrow and the, uh, the little bobbin symbol to the left like that and that's just off to the left of the this opening here near the front of the machine. So I've just decided to thread in black there just to hopefully provide a bit more contrast here. Just make sure you don't slide the plate forward because that will disengage the bobbin winding mechanism. And the manual also recommends a the minimum speed for this speed setting. So we should be able to just uh, put a little bit of power on here. And there we go, we're starting to wind onto the bobbin there. So this is what they call an in-place bobbin winder. So the thread is coming through down from the top thread through the needle eye and then winding directly around the bobbin. So I'll just wind a little bit on there. And the nice thing about the in-place bobbin winding is that you now all you have to do is bring the needle out of the out of the plate there. So the take up levers at the top there and the needles fairly well at the top of its position and then you close the plate that disengages the bobbin winding mechanism, close that right up and then you just get you know a pair of scissors or tweezers or something and just pull the thread out like that and then just snip the thread and you're ready to go. You're literally ready to start sewing there now. Let's suppose that you had a bobbin already wound and maybe you just wanted to change colour. You could you know remove the existing bobbin here and get your new bobbin, well the bobbin that's already pre-wound and you just install that in position as you normally would. So the bobbin always goes in by the way with the, the white disc here facing down so that goes in first and then you've got this clear disc on the top here. So you just place your bobbin in as you normally would and then uh, just put down the latch there and turn the machine over one revolution in the operating direction. And that will pick the thread up just like you would any normal sewing machine. It's no different to any other machine in that respect. And then you can just pick up your thread from there. Just like that. Close that. I've changed thread colour again there just to white to provide a bit of contrast on this blue fabric here. So we're ready to start sewing there. Just place your fabric under the presser foot, lower your presser foot, make sure that your take up lever is in the top position and we should be all set to go there. That's a nice straight stitch there. You can also change the needle positioning, so at the moment we're in the centre position. If we flick this lever to the left, the needle will move left. And if we put it across to the right, the needle will move to the right position. And if we wanted to, we could sew along on the left hand position there. or the right hand position. It pays to take the needle out of the material when you're changing this positioning because it can bend the needle. 
a little bit or strain the needle anyway. So always bring the material the needle out of the material there and then do your positioning from there. So reversing is done with this lever here and that's down by the stitch length dial. So if, if you wanted to do a back tack you'd be sewing a few stitches in the forward mode then hold down the reverse and sew a few stitches back and then release to go forward again and head off on the main seam. So presser foot pressure is determined by this dial here. So on normal that's pretty much set up for standard type sewing, just general sewing. And if maybe if you were sewing heavy duty materials, thick um, heavy materials, you would switch that up to positive. And then if you keep going around, you get up to maximum here. And if we go the other way, so for maybe lighter weight shear fabrics, you would come down to the negative position. That latches into place too little latch there and then come right down to the darning setting so that releases the foot pressure altogether and when changing this just make sure that the presser foot is in the down position so if you wanted to sew a zigzag for instance first of all you would start by setting uh, the touch selector dial here to the zigzag so it's just a matter of pushing that in and turning the knob until it lines up in between these two red lines here and also make sure that you're doing this when the needles out of the fabric because sometimes the needle moves across when it's selecting different stitches and you don't want to strain or bend the needle uh, generally you would position the needle positioner in the center position and you would also set the width to whatever width you want really. I mean, it's, it's, let's go for the widest width. We should be on the zigzag style. And, and that's the widest zigzag. If you wanted to decrease the stitch length, you would adjust the stitch length here. So if we wanted to make the stitch length shorter, we would come down off just below three, maybe down to even one there. And now we should be set to go with a smaller stitch length. So the stitches will be closer together in this length here. So, and if we wanted to take the width down to a narrower zigzag, we come down to say three, and now we should have a narrow zigzag. Just like that. So that's fairly much the, the basics of this machine covered. I'll be doing more videos on this machine and maybe go through some of these pattern stitches, decorative stitches, button holding, chain stitching, uh, and other, maybe just have a wee look through the manual and see if there's anything in there that we can have a look at as well. So um, hope you enjoyed that video on the basics of the Singer 766 and thank you very much for watching.